Greetings, my name is uh, Dennis Kazar. I'm from the United States. I live in the state of Arizona. And I'm married to my wife, Joan. We've been married almost 53 years. And uh, we have two children, our son, Timothy, who is uh, 48 years old now. And he's also a pastor. He has served the Lord pastoring churches. And he has four children. He has two sons and two daughters. And uh, our daughter, Jennifer, lives in California, and she has two daughters. So I have six grandchildren, and they're all wonderful. And uh, I've been a pastor for 35 years, pastored three different churches, uh, a Baptist church, uh, Evangelical Covenant church, and a community church. I've also been a missionary in Brazil, uh, served there for about four years. And uh, recently, for the last 10, 12 years, I've uh, traveled pretty much worldwide, probably to over 50 countries of the world, ministering to pastors and missionaries uh, all over the globe. And it's been a great joy to encourage them, to try to strengthen them in their ministries. The name of uh, my particular ministry is called World Leadership Ministries. I've also had the privilege to write a couple of books. One uh, is entitled Hope for the Troubled Heart, The Journey to an Untroubled Heart. And uh, we also do a seminar on that, and I've done that in various places. But the most recent book that I've written is called Fallen, Broken, Restored. And that's come out of some painful experiences, not only for me personally, but for other people. As I've traveled around the world and been exposed to Christian leaders in a variety of settings, I've witnessed many of them have fallen, fallen in a variety of ways, fallen morally, fallen, fallen uh, ethically, uh, have had major problems in their lives. And I've had a few of my own. And the thing that I have noticed is that the Christian community does not know what to do with a fallen leader. What they tend to do so often is to reject them or neglect them completely. And uh, that, that's such a tragedy. Many high profile Christian leaders in the United States that I'm aware of, their fall, their sin has become public in the newspaper, on TV, and yet in most of the cases, they have been rejected by the Christian community, and very few of them have ever been restored to a life of usefulness and to fellowship with the local body. It's one of the great tragedies of Christendom, not only in the United States, but I've seen that overseas. And it's not only Christian leaders, it's Christians. Christians have problems, Christians stumble, Christians fail, Christians fall. But so often, they have never been lifted back up and completely restored to usefulness and effectiveness. And I, I've really been burdened by this because of my own experience and because of the experience of other people. The neglected ministry is a ministry of restoration. And we don't really understand church discipline either. And I've seen that uh, misused, misapplied in a variety of ways. So I had to think very deeply. I was forced to think very deeply about what the Bible has to say about church discipline and about restoration. And we've come up with this title, Fallen, Broken, and Restored. And I've written the book on that and I titled it The Journey from Ruination to restoration. It is a journey, but there's a biblical roadmap that will get us from ruination to restoration. But again, it's neglected. And uh, we err on uh, two sides of that. Either we do nothing or we overreact and we destroy people. It's always a challenge 
And I, I found it very challenging as I was writing the book and as I was preparing these lectures. The challenge is to accurately balance truth and grace. Either we're all about truth and there's no grace and we use the truth of God's word just to beat on people. Or we're all about grace and we never get around to speaking the truth. Keeping those in balance as I was writing and working on these lectures was, was a challenge. To balance God's eternal principles, that's his truth, never compromising those, never lowering down his standards in any way, but also talking about the grace that's freely given to saints and sinners alike because he is the God of all grace, but he's the God of truth, and his word is true. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.